World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King Classic is a game that seems to be providing players with tons of activities, which in the end can be split into two general categories and everything you do will fall under one of these. So it's either PvP or PvE. Let's focus on the first one in this video and I will explain what PvP and WoW Water Classic is, how it works and how to get started. So by definition PvP is player versus player. This means no matter how you look at it, it's always player competing with another player, mostly. Living, briefing, opponent. PvP in WoW can be further split into three subcategories. Open world PvP, battlegrounds and of course arenas. And yes it's true there are also duels and other stuff but come on. Open world PvP is exactly what it sounds like. Ganking. If you are one of these degenerates that enjoy visiting barons as level 80 gnome rogue and murdering bunch of level 10 orcs and cows, congratulations, pat yourself on the back, you're a big boy and definitely not someone with very sad life. Now that we have these degenerates out of the way, let's talk about so-called BGs, or battlegrounds. The game offers a grand total of 6 BGs of various sizes and one official contested zone that have been turned into another massive BG. Sizes of competing teams can vary from 10 vs 10 to massive 120 vs 120 players to, that are competing with various objectives and killing each other to earn honor points. And lastly we have arenas, these are very small scale PvP scenarios where a handful of players compete to be the last man standing to earn arena rating and arena points. These come in three variations. 2 vs 2, 3 vs 3, and 5 vs 5. So, now that you know what the game has to offer, how do you actually start? Well, that's easy. I will be talking about max level PvP at the time of making this video, it's level 80, as it's just gonna make stuff much more straightforward. So, you're fresh level 80, you got nothing but bit of gold and leveling greens and blues, and you want to join PvP. Personally, I would recommend hitting some dungeons first. But since we are talking about PvP, I will give you a fully fledged guide to gear yourself up doing PvP alone. But remember, this gear is gonna be mostly useful for PvP. It can actually be used for PvE as well with a little bit of tweaks, and it's really decent gear. But PvE gear is always better for PvE. PvP gear is always better for PvP. So to start, forget about random battlegrounds. Yes, in theory these could get you more honors by both winning and losing, but will indiscriminately throw you into any battleground that needs extra people against fully geared opponents, resulting in you having terrible time, no fun and very bad honor point gains, anyway. And that's with the bonus taken into consideration. Your first step should be heading all the way back to Hellfire Peninsula and going to Honor Oat or Traumar, respectively. You can get initial PvP quest for capturing 3 towers in this location, that unlocks daily quest of the same nature. Competing the initial quest will award the player with free insignia, which is mandatory PvP trinket for anyone who wants to take themselves seriously, and it have the same effect as human's racial ability, breaking any CC, now that's crowd control, effect restricting movement or making you lose control of your character. The following daily quest rewards very decent amount of honor points each day and it's very much worth doing as well, because it's gonna speed up your gearing significantly. Now, that the initial quest and hopefully daily quest in Honorhold has been finished, or thermal, you should equip your insignia, make macro for it or just bring it on your hotbars, that's very much up to you, and be ready to make good use of it once you actually get into some PvP action. But not before heading to Northfront first and visiting Wintergrasp. Here you can find a handful of weekly PvP quests that each reward decent amounts of honor points as well as Stonekeeper shards. Accept these quests and head back to Dalaran, where upon speaking to your respective representative of the Wintergrass Initiative, or whatever is the correct name for this, you can queue up for Battle of Lake Wintergrass Battleground every 3 hours, starting at midnight server time. This means that every day at midnight, 3 am, 6 am, 9 am, 12, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and again on midnight, you can take part in this massive 120 vs 120 battleground. This battleground is perfect place to start your PvP journey, as it offers tons of objectives to complete, each providing everyone in the battleground a generous amount of honor points, 
regardless of their location, as well as a large scale combat resulting in a lot of honorable kills, providing additional free honor to new players regardless of their gear. You can also pilot siege vehicles that will completely negate your gear issues and can be used to bring down the objectives, that's towers, giving out the aforementioned rewards in form of honor points. On average, I ended up getting around 8k honor points when we lost and up to 20k honor points when we won the game. And on top of that, you can complete around 3 to 4 previously mentioned weekly quests that will further increase the honor gain. But Winter Grasp is only available every 3 hours for 30 minutes and you can only join it once and dailies and weeklies can only be finished so many times. And that means getting poorly on these quests and Winter Grasp would take considerably longer than doing something else. And this means you will have to queue up for normal battlegrounds as well if you want to speed it up a bit. For that, first visit any of the generals in your capital cities or in Dalaran to check the daily battleground quest. If the daily battleground quest is for Isle of Conquest or Altera Quali, accept it, otherwise ignore it, as I only recommend queuing up for AV and IOC, that's Altera Quali and Isle of Conquest for short. Same as Winter Grasps, these battlegrounds are large scale battles, each containing one whole rate of people, meaning it's 40 versus 40 players, and in case of IOC you can actually mount siege vehicles once again, and negate the penalization of weak gear and actively take part in sieging the enemy fortress. In both cases, these battlegrounds will ensure you are still able to actually enjoy the fight without being absolutely destroyed, as that's what would happen in the smaller scale battlegrounds. And generally, nobody is going to get annoyed by your poor gear sabotaging the whole team in these battlegrounds. And especially AV will net you a lot of honors because once again, it provides tons of objectives for everyone to complete, each providing extra honor points that are rather irrelevant of the outcome of the whole battleground. So, by competing in these aforementioned battlegrounds, you should be able to relatively quickly, think in roughly 10 hours, get full main set gear set that can be bought from any arena vendor for honors. Make sure you're actually buying the correct gear. There are always three arena vendors, and because we are in the second to last phase of Wrath of the Lich King, as of making this video, each vendor sells different variations of gear set. Always buy the strongest one available for owners. Make sure to double check. You can even speed up this gearing further by exchanging sto stone keepers, shards, wintergrass marks of honor, and potentially even arena points for extra honor points in Wintergrass Fortress or in Dalaran Underbelly respectively. And what I noticed is that not many people know about one simple trick, and that's if you have another character that has some extra Stonekeeper shards or Wintergrass Marks of Honor, you can exchange these for accommodations that can be sent over to the character you are gearing up for PvP, essentially allowing you to send honors over. Now, let's just quickly touch on the reasons why you don't want to queue up for any other battlegrounds. Random battlegrounds or call to arms battlegrounds as long as it's not AV or Isle of Conquest. The PvP gear provides players with two extremely valuable stats, that's Resilience and Stamina. Both of these stats makes players more healthy and tougher to kill. Stamina is self-explanatory, based on your class and talents, each point of stamina will increase your total health, allowing you to survive more beating and be harder to kill. Resilience helps this even further by providing up to 15% decreased critical hit chance to any enemy that's attacking you, meaning they are not gonna be hitting you as often with crits. 33% decreased damage from critical strikes and mana drains, which will further increase your survivability, and another flat 30% reduction of any damage suffering from players. These are the bonuses of the fully geared PvP player. These two stats combined with high amount of armor provided by PvP gear turns people who get the main set of offset and trinkets into unstoppable killing machines that literally cannot be damaged by low geared players. On top of that, PvP gear provides a very decent amount of offensive stat as well as providing PvP geared players with decent amount of damage and sometimes even armor penetration and spell penetration in exchange for having poor hit rating, which can be bended with gems. Meaning, 
if you don't have good PvP gear, you are gonna get completely steamrolled in small scale PvP battles such as Warsong Gulch, Arati Basin or I have Storm, simply because there is not enough highly geared players around you to save you from the enemy that will inevitably two-shot you while you are left wondering why you are not even putting a dent into their massive health pool. On top of that, Warsong Gulch, also known as VSG, Arafi Basin, also known as AB, and IO The Storm, also known as AOS, does not provide nearly enough objectives as IOC or AV. Meaning, the added rewards in terms of honor points for finishing these objectives will not make up for the reward of lost game, leaving you with very small amount of honors per game, even if you queue up during call to arms or a random battleground. So, to gear up for PvP, I can also put it shortly. Do daily quests in Hellfire, get f early free insignia to save up on initial cost of good trinket, queue up as many winter grasp as possible, do as many winter grasp weekly quests as possible, check PvP daily and if it's AV or IOC do it, and lastly just spam AV and IOC as hard as possible. When it comes to gearing, I would recommend everyone to get some PvE weapons from dungeons or reputations or raid if you can get in some. But if you insist on PvP only, get the PvP weapon first. And that also applies for shields, of hands, weapons, etc. etc. As soon as possible you can buy these from arena vendors. Then aim for the full 5 piece main set, then full offset and then get the best medallion of Horde or Alliance. And replace your initial insignia with it. And lastly, get Battlemaster's Fury or similar extra trinket for added stats. And, when you have all that, get your gear enchanted, jammed with as much hit rating, resilience or spell penetration as possible. Check class specific guide, I cannot cover everything in this video. And small tip, you can buy head and shoulders PvP enchants as well as PvP meta gems and unique resilience gems in your capital city and winter grasp. Also, uh, I am making this video during Wrath of the Lich King Classic, when we have the second to last phase. When there is a new expansion, and there is like the first or second phase, you cannot actually buy weapons from PvP vendors, or at least that's been the case during TBC and Wrath of the Lich King. <clears throat> if we ever have Cataclysm, I assume it's gonna be the same. So, there's a chance you still will have to do some battlegrounds, uh, not battlegrounds, sorry, dungeons and stuff like that, to get decent weapon. Anyway, back to the video. There is also some other trinkets and pieces of gear that can help you on your PvP journey that are both with different currencies, but I don't have space to cover these in this video. And just to top it off, once you are fully geared, feel free to join the fun in a small scale PvP battles such as Warsong Gulch without the risk of being flamed by us sweaty tryhards for wasting our time. It's f kind of fun game to play when everyone in the team can survive more than two hits and can dish out some serious damage and we actually have some chance of winning. Or you can form arena team and have some fun in arenas. Uh, after all, arenas are a completely different kind of gameplay and are tons of fun. As a matter of fact, I will briefly cover arenas now as well to make it all complete. So to join arenas, I would recommend having fully fledged PvP gear with enchants and gems, anything that can help you. You cannot use any non-conjured food or buffs in arenas. So save these up for B serious BG sessions. Get yourself one or two friends that are similarly geared and queue up in Dalaran Underbelly for 2v2 or 3v3. Don't bother with 5v5 yet, it's pure chaos and requires people to learn some tricks from the 2s and 3s first. But it's a lot of fun. When the arena queue pops, enter and prepare, prepare yourself. You and your friends have roughly one minute to buff each other etc. because all the buffs you had before has been automatically wiped out. After one minute the gate will open and you'll be put against another team of the same amount of people as is yours. The last team standing wins the arena and is awarded predetermined amount of arena rating. That's calculated from the amount of arena rating both of the teams had. The difference and gap in between each member of the teams etc. This all is taken into consideration. Competing in further arenas can increase or eventually, after reaching certain threshold, even decrease the arena rating you have based on how well you did. 
And on weekly reset, that's Wednesday by the way, everyone is rewarded arena points based on their arena rating as long as they played at least 10 games during the last week. That's arena games by the way, not battlegrounds, just arena games are considered here. To buy even better PvP gear than what's available for owners, you're gonna need tons of arena points that can only be earned by participating in arenas or completing PvP battleground daily quests or doing first daily run on battleground. Each of these provide 25 extra arena points. Sadly, this gear is largely locked behind arena rating as well, which is only unlocked by playing arenas. Some of the arenas locked uh, offset gear can be both with owners as well in the capital city of each faction. And there you have it. This is how PvP works in Wrath of the Lich King Classic, and how even you can start having fun competing with other players around the globe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Be civilized and we might even have some healthy discussion if you disagree on something. Or maybe I forgot about something, or maybe I left out something that you think is very important to mention. Either way, I will catch you next time and see ya.